example, when people think about skin cancer, they tend to think immediately about melanoma. And melanoma is certainly a very important cancer. It's the skin cancer that kills the most people every year in the U.S. But actually, basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma is much more common than melanoma. Melanoma, there are about 80,000 cases per year in the U.S. And basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma, there are well over a million cases a year. Melanoma comes from a certain type of cell in the epidermis called melanocytes. And those are the cells that give pigment and color to our skin. And when those cells go wrong, when those melanocytes go wrong, that gives rise to melanoma. On the other hand, basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma grow from a different kind of cell in the epidermis, a completely different type of cell called the keratinocyte, which is actually the main cell of our epidermis. And those cells are constantly being damaged by ultraviolet radiation from the time that we're born. And our body has mechanisms to constantly be repairing that damage that ultraviolet light is creating inside the keratinocytes. But over time and with certain underlying medical conditions, those mechanisms can be imperfect. And as we age, the chance that we'll have enough imperfections in those cells to cause a cancer really starts to go up. We're starting to see more non-melanoma skin cancers, more basal cell and more squamous cell in younger persons. It used to be very rare to see those types of tumors in people in their 20s and 30s, but that is on the rise now. It's hard to know exactly why that is, but um, one thing that's been implicated are tanning beds. And people, especially young women, who've gone to tanning beds repeatedly we're starting to see these basal cell and squamous cell cancers at a much younger age in those persons. The, the main risk factor for basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma is sun exposure, particularly sunburns. People with, with light skin who are susceptible to sunburns have the highest risk of developing these skin cancers. Tanning is, is also a risk factor, so people who seek out the sun over the years and get a lot of cumulative ultraviolet exposure through habitual tanning, they're also at an increased risk. But people who burn easily and who've gotten multiple sunburns, especially multiple blistering sunburns, those people are at a very high risk for basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. The treatment for non-melanoma skin cancer depends first of all where it is in the skin. If it's just right on the very surface of the skin in the epidermis, where most of these tumors start, then you may not need surgery for those. The, the epidermal basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas can be treated with topical creams, with light therapies, with just some very superficial um, scraping or freezing techniques. And so for those um, epidermal tumors, there are a lot of treatment options that are fairly non-invasive. Then for those deeper tumors, the ones that have left the epidermis and are now growing down in the main layer of the skin, down in the dermis, those really are not very amenable to these topical therapies, and those generally um, require a surgical excision of some sort. The surgical options for non-melanoma skin cancer include a standard surgical excision where in the doctor's office the, the tumor is cut out and sent to a pathology laboratory and processed and checked under the microscope. And patients in that scenario get a pathology report back usually about a week or so later to let them know whether or not the cancer is clear. There's another alternative to that called Mohs surgery, which is what I do for most of my time. And with Mohs surgery, instead of having the patient wait a week while the tissue is processed at an outside pathology laboratory. We remove the tumor and we process it right there in our own laboratory while the patient's waiting. And we process it differently. We don't cut it like a loaf of bread and just look at representative slices. We actually look at the entire undersurface that we've removed and the entire perimeter around the tumor so that we're looking at nearly 100% of that marginal surface and we check that ourselves under the microscope. And so the advantage of Mohs surgery, one of the advantages is that the same doctor who's removing the tumor is looking at it under the microscope. And the benefit of that is that when I'm looking at that under the microscope, I can see exactly where any residual tumor is. I know if it's in the epidermis, I know if it's in the dermis, I know if it's in the fat, I know if it's on the right-hand side of the wound, the left-hand side, 
And so then I can be very precise when I go back and remove more tissue from the patient. And I can remove additional tissue just in that area that's positive. So I'm both being very precise and making sure that I'm getting out the whole entire tumor, but I'm also not having to take away a lot of extra normal tissue to ensure that I have a clear margin. I can remove what needs to be removed, but nothing else. Once we know that the patient has a clear margin microscopically, then we reconstruct the wound that same day in our office. This is all office-based surgery done under local anesthesia. Patients don't need to be sedated or asleep for these procedures. In rare cases when the tumors are very large, then we work in conjunction with the head and neck surgeons or the plastic surgeons or surgical oncology. But fortunately, those larger tumors are quite rare. And the vast majority of what we do, we're able to remove right there in our office setting under local anesthesia and reconstruct it right there for the patient. So the patient all in one day knows that their tumor's out and, and walks away with a good reconstruction and a very nice cosmetic result because we're able to fully remove the tumor but not have to remove a lot of extra tissue to ensure that. When I arrived at Brigham and Women's, I founded the first clinic devoted to non-melanoma skin cancer patients in Boston. And in this clinic, we see patients who either have had difficulty with multiple non-melanoma skin cancers, the patients who I mentioned who have multiple tumors over their body in different stages, or patients who just have one particularly high-risk, troublesome, aggressive basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma. We also in this clinic see patients with rare forms of non-melanoma skin cancer, like dermatofibroma, sarcoma, protuberans, and some other rare entities.